In this video, we will show you how you can explore the concept of gravitational field and gravitational potential of a two mass system. Double click on the jar file that you have downloaded. It should look like this file. Okay, it opens up. So ignore the HTML. Uh, just double click on the simulation to expand it to full screen. Now you can see that at the beginning there is this world view which you can see the different masses. So check on the boxes to activate M1. Okay, and you can check also on the test mass if you want to. Okay, the test mass is usually set at one kilogram, and from here you can see that the test mass here can be dynamically moved around in order for the students to visualize this concept called the gravitational field strength. Now checking on this button in for the matter the various buttons will allow you to understand and explore the different graphical representations of these concepts like G field potential force and potential energy. Leaving your mouse there for a while will toggle the hints. So for example, you're interested in G fuel. So this is showing you the net G fuel strength. So as you drag the test mass around, you can see how the blue massive mass M1 is actually creating this influence around his surrounding that uh, they will get other masses to be attracted to it so on the right you can see that there are all these values which are actually g1 and g2 later on you will see belongs to the gravitational field strength at the test mass position due to mass 2 and this is the net so because there is no capital M2 selected, therefore G2 will be 0, therefore making G1 equal to G net, which is as shown as this golden color line. So as you can probably figure out, you can actually play with this and find out for yourself how is this G fuel related. Okay, so you can play with this. And you can see how the, f the direction of the G is actually indicated here as in the pink arrow. Okay, so if you if is if this test mass is on the right of the mass M1, you can find that the force or the in this case the gravitational field strength will be pointing to the left and. If the test mass is on the left of the M1, correspondingly, you can find the direction of the G1. Okay, now this is this has this simulation has been modified according to what we believe to be correct for a uniformly dense mass. So as the position of R increases, the G fuel strength actually is varying linearly. But once it is outside the mass, it becomes your traditional 1 over R square relationship. Okay, now if you check on the other boxes, you can find that now you can see the resultant G field due to the 2 mass system. And as you move the test mass around, you can see that now you have a pink arrow which is the G1. You also have a slight green arrow, which is the G2. And they should be pointing to the right, okay, at this position. So you can see how it changes, okay. And then as it is inside, notice that G1 is now pointing to the left, with G2 still continuing to point to the right, because gravitational strength are attractive, okay. And if it is on the right, you can see that the arrow head for G1 is a lot smaller than for G2 because now the test mass position is a lot nearer to M2 and not so near to M1. 
So this is how the direction of the G fuel strength can change. You can actually use this slider to control the degree of visualization for the G's to be drawn. Okay, so if you find that this is too short, you can actually change it. Okay. Now you can also find that in this simulation, if you play, click on the play button, you can actually discover for yourself how this test mass will behave under the influence of the gravitational field strength. Okay, so you can reset and you can also now be able to visualize the individual G1s as commonly difficult to understand for students as in the lecture notes it is usually not very well uh, explained then you can move this around and you can see now this dotted line is actually now the G1 so if you uncheck it and check it you can find the influence the, the graph of G1 you can find the graph of G2 okay and if you were to draw both then you can see how the value of G1 and G2 at this position will add up to give you the G net at the same value okay now likewise if you were to understand this so let me uncheck this okay so another concept that comes with this will be the value of potential so potential is also a concept that you can explore here so you can dynamically move or you can reset the whole simulation so that it gets back to its original position and you can see now if I put a test mass here okay uh, if it is right at the center where the two M1 and M2 are of equal masses let's say in this case 1000 and 1000 you will find that it is at an equilibrium because the forces on the right is equal to the forces on the left therefore it is uh, experiencing a net force of zero okay but notice that the actually the phi 1 and the phi 2 are actually negative okay as shown by this value here so if you toggle phi 1 so this will be phi 1 this position here will be negative 3.34 e to the power of minus 8 and this will also be phi 2 at this position so adding this phi 1 and phi 2 together you'll get a phi net which is actually negative 6.67 to the power of minus 8 so graphically it looks like that uh, but numerically you can also you can also change the position of the test mass to discover for yourself the individual values at that position and if the simulation is running you can find that it will move according to the Newton's law of motion now the last thing that you can play with this simulation and, and discover for yourself will be this d phi over dr so d phi over dr is actually the gradient as you can see if I move the test mass around this gradient here is your d phi over dr and it is currently having a value of negative 4.17 to the power of minus 8 and this will actually correspond to a value that you can find so numerically is equal to this but with an extra negative sign so this simulation hopes that you can actually discover for yourself by playing around okay becoming like a scientist to collect data so you can collect several data and then come up with a trend and discuss with your colleagues or, or fellow classmates what this value and this value have in common okay so that you can be like a scientist